From the entrepreneurial spirit he learned from his sainted mother to the fortune that he inherited in the shrimp industry. Come on down to Will's Pimp a Shrimp. Hey, motherfucker. Don't you mean motherfucking Will and motherfucking Jeff, motherfucker? To his tireless struggle as a black advocate by whatever means necessary. Will Smith's magnificent story is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. <laughs> Growing up fatherless in a boarding house in West Philadelphia, young Will always looked to his mother's wisdom for guidance. Mama always said life is like a big old goddamn box of chocolates. Kicking it sweet, black and sticky, Big Willie style. Now ain't that some bullshit! I ain't never taught that nappy ass Uncle Tom nothing like that! And he goddamn well knows it now! He sure do give his mama some fine jewelry, though. And although Will's business acumen took some time to develop, audiences were devastated by his unflinching integrity. Mama always said, you gotta fight the power. Big Willie style. Oh, now there he goes again. That goddamn fool-headed, stupid, fitched-ass Negro be all running around misquoting his mama. Ooh, he lord, 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 here comes my new Cadillac. Will was still living at home when a mysterious fire burned down his entire neighborhood. Mr. Smith was going to Hollywood. Civil rights activist and producer Jerry Bruckheimer remembers. Yeah, Will's abonic pride made him perfect for my new project. That film, Armageddo, teamed Will up with fellow rapper DJ Jazzy Jeff. We all did our own motherfucking stunts. Well, I did Will's motherfucking stunts too. Motherfucker always said he had to be careful he didn't fall down and sprain his motherfucking blackness. Then came the routine traffic stop that changed Will and Jeff's lives forever. Hey, what the hell is this, motherfucker? That's him. I didn't do shit. He done it! Officers! Ah. I think he's trying to get away! Hey, that's my arm, bitch! Look at Damn that! Oh, Resisting fuck. arrest! Hey, that's profiling! It's because I'm black! Y'all know what I'm hey. a joke. Ah. I got him now! Come on, out my leg! This no. brother ain't going nowhere! Ah. Soon the powder keg of racial tension in Los Angeles exploded. Will and Jeff left L.A. to pursue Jeff's family shrimp business. But like all dreams, this one had to die. My mama said, always stand by your boys. Big Willie style. God damn, what's the world coming to when a nigga be chugging crack a cock out of one corner of his mouth and lordy lordy come my freezer full of T-bones. Will's Hollywood comeback was the role of a lifetime. Legendary civil rights reformer Jim X. Always outnumbered, always outgunned, always helping the United Negro College Fund. But at the peak of greatness, tragedy. Will received word that his sainted mama had choked to death on a can of yams. My mama always said, it ain't about the Washingtons, it's about the Benjamins. Clearly, it's a lesson in ass-sucking that Will Smith has taken to heart. Big Willie style. What up, dog? My wife and I like to keep up with what be going down in the hood, which is why we enjoy the Killing Cops and hip-hop volume of Behind the Music That Sucks. It keeps us real. And when we really need to feel urban, we curl up on the couch with some good port and watch the box set. Back that ass up. Oh, you. Product may cause self-aggrandizing dementia and make you buy a gun. From a troubled Jeans West employee, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. to a man who gets by with a little help from his friends. What am I gonna do now that you're gone, Biggie? <laughs> Shit, sell a lot of motherfucking CDs, that's what. I'm missing work. It seems Puffy Combs is on top of the world looking down on creation, and the only explanation he can find is he's butt ass lucky. His story is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. <laughs> Not much is known of Sean Puffy Combs before he and his brother Willis were adopted by a cosmopolitan white man. But signs of his impending fame and fortune were everywhere. Everyone saw that I had the potential to be the baddest motherfucker in all time hip hop at a very young age. I remember you would put on Diana Ross records and try to sing over them. He never knew the words. It was then that Mr. Drummond knew Puffy was special. I thought he was retarded special enough to send little Puffy to a very special school, where he thrived and the staff encouraged his unique talents. That boy? Shit, he was funny. He put on a record and he would just rock back and forth mumbling, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. But the minute the staff turned off the record, Puffy would react in a violent rage, smacking his forehead and screaming, five minutes to Wapner. 
chatter cannot be contained or controlled. I'm the man. It was then that his father realized that Puffy was destined for stardom. That kid was crazy! Puffy's caring father realized the only thing he could do is set that talent free. On the streets, Puffy found the break he was looking for by meeting crack dealer Biggie Smalls in East New York. The two became inseparable friends and learned that both had a passion for music. That passion would take them all the way to the top. Karaoke was starting to sweep the American pop culture landscape and served as fertile ground for young emerging talents. Biggie and Puffy immersed themselves in the burgeoning scene and found themselves gaining respect from that community. Tucker Leibowitz, known in the industry as Mother Tucker, caught Biggie and Puffy's act and signed them on the spot. I was high on crack. Puffy's star was on the rise. I'm still high on crack. The worst was yet to come. Puffy learned that his stepsister Kimberly was caught holding up a dry cleaning store in Fresno. She pleaded for help from her brother on the rise. Fuck that crack a bitch. That week his brother Willis was caught sipping wheatgrass at a dairy in Connecticut juice bar and was promptly arrested. Man, I thought that brother was a straight up fucking cracker. Puffy retreated from the pain and poured himself into other people's music. <laughs> he was all up in my face saying, I gotta be in your video. The next day, Puffy was featured in Biggie's first big music video. His eclectic style of bobbing his head and standing around gained major attention from the critics. That's when I finally got my motherfucking respect. Realizing his ticket to fame, Puffy started standing around in other people's videos, sometimes varying the act by moving his arms. But stardom, he would find, was not all the crack he thought it would be. Tragically, his friend, partner, was struck down by a drive-by fruiting. Ah, oh, Biggie was allergic to fruit. Did you ever say a nigga eat any fruit? No. Puffy was devastated. Cha-ching! Found a way to express his pain once again through other people's music. Cha-ching! He dedicated the police classic, I'll Be Missing a Little Jew, to his departed pal and won the hearts and the dollars of music fans around the globe. Tragedy, like a stroke victim, has a way of making you learn as much as you've lost. And Puffy has learned a lot and often thinks about his incarcerated family members and the memory of his departed friend, Biggie Smalls. Cha-ching! But the world waits to see what else this superstar will learn and what he might teach, what other triumphs he might avail, whether he will ever discover that Puffy Combs sucks ass. From the peach fuzz lined limousine of boy band stardom to the organ grinding bozo band with its own product line and the pus fueled three ring cult following that made the insane clown posse the laughing stock of the music world. Their circus act is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. <laughs> Formed as a less talented but wider new edition tribute band, New Kids on the Block paved the bubblegum road to success that is now the crossroads of Carson Daly Lane and Backstreet. But the constant pressure to remain 12 years old quickly took its toll. It was during a performance at the Northside Shopping Mall in 1994 when Danny got his first pimple. Maurice Starr, who discovered and castrated the band, still remembers the zit. A big, greasy white one. I couldn't put him on stage that way. The whole band would have been at risk. And the five soon began experimenting with prescription acne medicine. If we weren't, like, getting the second base with the bitches, we'd be using 100 Oxy Wipes and a tube of Clearasil every night until we discovered over-the-counter industrial strength creams and suppositories. Dermatologist to the stars, Edward James almost was rushed to the scene. The nodule was 6.3 millimeter in diameter. It appeared completely normal when I began slowly massaging it between my thumbs. But almost popped the pimple, opening a rare pus pressure pocket in Danny's head, causing it to burst. With no formal education, no ability to sing whatsoever, and their boyish charms as empty as their bank accounts, the group released its last album, Face the Music. Sensing their imminent demise, the four remaining new kids sought advice from the only successful musician they knew, Donnie's brother, Funky Buncher, Marky Mark. Yo, I just told him to look deep inside and discover the inner children. The rest will come natural. Realizing that nothing short of a total transformation could revive their flaccid musical careers, the kids searched their souls and their pores for answers. But since they had no soul, they went on a peyote ride through the desert with Oliver Stone. That day, inspiration struck. 
The band re-emerged with a new zest for life as the world's first and only hip-hop balloon animal twisting act. We tore down the birthday circuit, man! John could make a wicked dope poodle, and Joe's balloon hats was the shit! Though they had found inspiration, Donnie and Jordan sank even deeper into the nightmarish world of acne medication. It was their darkest hour. When I saw Donnie and Jordan that way, I just had to give them another shot. Their renewed faith in the good book of Bozo and an advance from Star kept the cream flowing long enough to produce an album. The group had changed its name to Insane Clown Posse and garnered a huge following among teenage acne sufferers. But the label just didn't get it. They didn't see how talent like that could burst onto the mainstream. The clowns changed their names to Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope. They established their own recording label, Psychopathetic Records, and a self-release follow-up. Since neither of us knew how to read a dictionary, and we couldn't agree on how to spell the word, we released two separate but equally flavorful albums, Bizarre and Bizarre. Bizarre and Bizarre's cotton candy-ass sound, along with the Posse's live performances and pimple-friendly food products, brought millions of crater faces under the insane clown Posse's big top. Toasted Juggalos are 100% zit-free! Stop talking and sing, monkey, sing! The boys realize there is no super cure-all cleansing pad in the greasy world that is pop music, but through it all, it takes an insane clown posse to truly suck ass. From the charismatic young artist who ushered in a new era of Camelot and the sorrow that pimp slapped a first family, to the selfless advocate who sought the truth, we'll examine the life of Tupac Shakur and the conspiracy behind his death next on Behind the Music That Sucks. A precocious child, Tupac Shakur coupled a fancy for handguns with an uncanny sensitivity to human suffering. No more tears, yo! Catapulted headlong into the public eye, Tupac inspired the nation with his camera-ready looks and bold new ideas. Ask not what Tupac can do for you, but what you can do for motherfucking Tupac! But even as Tupac's popularity swelled, Happy birthday, Mr. Shakur! His list of enemies multiplied. The ideal young leader would inherit the East Coast West Coast conflict as well as the steadily deteriorating Cuban problem. God damn it Bobby these aren't motherfucking Cubans! With the poetic articulation of a Tech 9, Tupac called for peace. Bitch nigga ain't shit wrap your lips around my Glock gonna blow your brain from here to the dark. But Tupac's heroic crusade of goodness came to an abrupt halt on September 13th 1996. I've just been handed this report. Raper Tupperware Shaker has been shot. What's that? Oh. <clears throat> Rapper Two Pork Shoulder has been shot. On a sunnier note, here's Chuckles the Weather Mime with our weekend forecast. Speculation immediately focused on low nut Biggie Smalls. Yo, I was a patsy, bitch! Ooh, that sounded bad, didn't it? But the Horn Commission report found that Biggie was neck deep in toothless hookers at the time of the shooting. Finally, amid the chaos, came the voice of reason. If he's so dead, where is he? Haunted by doubt, Johnny Cochran launched a new investigation into Tupac's death. If he ain't inside, must be all right. But Cochran's office received a mysterious tape from an anonymous source who had served jail time with Tupac. Tupac is totally dead. He was like Theodore Serena by Judith. You know, like the way Lincoln had John Philip Sosa, or a fellow had that guy with the peg leg. It's as plain as the fist in your colon. Ask yourself, who thought Tupac died, and who benefited? The source informed Cochran that Tupac's mother stood to reap millions from her dead son's royalties if he was, in fact, dead. For Cochran, it was a revelation. When there's royalties in the orphan, there's two pox in the coffin. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, using the film as a guide, we can see that 28 shots was fired, the first 14 entered his body here, then came out the other side. Now that's some damn fine shooting. Ultimately, however, it was Tupac's mother who swayed the jury with her son's final lyrics. Tonight, we're gonna waste the pigs and roast them in a pit. Then we're gonna rape their wives. Their bitches ain't worth shit. Oh, Lord. <gasps> 
He had so much love. And although conflicting stories still haunt the media, Johnny Cochran has finally found peace. With that boy deceased, my net worth increased. Dead or alive, one thing's for certain, in our hearts. Tupac Shakur will always suck America's ass. From the bleached beaches of a suburban white fantasy to the wintry island of Dr. Has Been and the desperate publicity stunt that put stupidity on the stand and made a monkey out of justice. Kid Rock is one link that should have remained missing. His story is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. In 1999, fortune smiled on Kid Rock. In 2000, that smile faded and became a frown. In 2001, fortune seemed to smile again, then frowned, and then vomited. But Kid Rock had formulated a bold new plan to put the vomit behind him. Oh, you think you're dumb of a kid, huh? Well, you... Well, you better listen up, baby, because here's the news. The kid ain't done with you, pally. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be right here, pimping harder than two pimps with a, a pimp machine, baby. Right after I get back? From out of space. While other fading rock stars had chosen to shoot themselves, very few had chosen to shoot themselves into space. Two, one, ignition. The stage was set for Kid Rock's re-entry into America's hearts. But Kid Rock's comeback, like some ill-advised modification of a vital time warp avoidance system on a rocket ship headed straight for a time warp, would prove disastrous. In the precious seconds that remained, Kid bid an emotional farewell to the adoring fans he would never see again. Moonshot! I've never seen one this close before. Shh. I think he's... The specimen showed an uncanny aptitude for tool use. For a human. My efforts to provoke a reaction were met only by incoherent yammer. Yo, what's up, baby? Wanna hear me bust some rhymes? Oh, I'm pimping some dumb new shit. Gonna blow you through the back wall, yo. So strap yourself in. But first, you best be locking up your women's on account of there's a new chef in town. And his name is Kid. The subject exhibited a crude... I'll be amusing. ...linguistic fumbling that piqued the possibility that I might have stumbled upon a, well... Missing link. The incendiary theory would leave the monkey establishment howling. Science? Heresy! This chart clearly illustrates the linear development of our species. And I don't see any Kid Rock here, do you? Indeed, the line had been drawn between creationism and evolution. I hereby call this tribunal to order! Yo, this kangaroo court can lick my balls! Objection! If he's the missing link, why can't he lick his own balls, hmm? Sustain! It was chimp versus pimp, as Kid Rock and Dr. Zayas went blow for intellectual blow over the sweet papaya of precept called justice. What, you saying the kid's the missing link? No, we think you are not the missing link. Yo, the link don't get any more missing than the kid, yo! Bring it on! Kid strove to prove that he had single-handedly set evolution back a million years. Did a roller skate ever fuck a mailbox? Huh? No! And it wasn't even Christmas, yo! With the tide of the trial turning against him, Kid Rock mounted an impassioned plea for justice. Hey, let me get old school on one thing, yo. You can play the kid like that one time. Maybe you can play the kid like that a thousand times. But the law of averages says you are going down. The gavel-wielding gorillas would not take long to make up their minds. We find the defendant too stupid to be the missing link. Yeah, boy! In your fate ass, Dr. Zay ass. And hereby sentence him to be shot back into space. Don't let it be said. Kid Rock didn't space pimp y'all. Monkey asses. Whatever planet this second banana of white rhyme may call home, Kid Rock remains guilty on all counts of sucking ass. From director of promotions at a fried chicken shack in the darkest depths of Jamaica, Queens, to America's most beloved hand puppet and walking billboard, LL Cool J has made a career of keeping it real for the man. His story is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. 
LL, known to friends as Sir Stands a lot, never wanted much out of life. Loving family, a dependable job, a periodic buff and shine. Then one tragic day, everything changed. Yo, yo, Toto! Toto! Yo, where Toto at? Ruby Reeboks, y'all. Peace and love to the Lord. At that time, I made the realization. I said, being flat don't sell shit. I got to get me a third dimension. Peace. I'm out. Help came in the form of a no-nonsense sister. I am Latifa, the good bitch of the North. The Wizards of Hollis will grant you what you seek. Others seeking the Wizards of Hollis joined LL on his journey to the hood of enlightenment. Ice T. If I only had a brain. Chris Rock. People. I just want a penis! And John McEnroe. Johnny Max, just looking for some white people. They traveled far and wide to find the one trio who could give them what they wanted. The Master MCs, otherwise known as the Wizards of Hollis. LL took work on the side to help support the group's journey. The four eventually reached their destination, only to be met with a new set of problems. Hello! Welcome to the crap. Brain. Penis. Tube socks? Mm, no, I think not. Actually, we'll take you. Yo, the Wizard of Hollis was supposed to be the man. You know what I'm saying? Word up. But then we got in with the peeps and we wasn't getting in. If you understand, let him my lord and savior. You know what I'm saying? Having come so close to their goal and having failed, the group turned sadly for home. Used to wear Adidas, that was old school rap. Fools had no money, so now we wear crap. The Wizards of Hollis? Hello, travelers. We be the Wizards of Hollis. And what do we have here? Ice tea. You seek the brain you feel you lack. We ask you this. Who needs a brain to play hardcore? And you. Chris Rock, you only want a penis. Probe deep within yourself, and you will find what you seek. Holy shit! I ain't a man at all! I'm a- And you, Mr. LL Cool J. You seek a third dimension, but you had it all along. Your third dimension is the skill to educate as you entertain. It's not flatness, a small price to pay for a gift as great as this. Then click your Ruby Rebox three times and say, There's no place like Queens. 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 There ain't no place like Queens. Toto, where you been all these years? In the end, LL went on tour and brought his special brand of consumer awareness to crowds everywhere, realizing his full potential to suck ass. Peace and love to my Lord and Savior. I'm out.